Welcome to the SEO.co Search Engine Optimization Podcast. Digital marketing essentials and next level tactics. From off-site and on-site optimization to persuasive selling and everything in between. You'll learn actionable tips on what it takes to outright and outrank your competition. help and troubleshoot content. You might also have a separate wing of your content strategy dedicated to helping and troubleshooting content, guiding users through the use of your products and services, or otherwise lending them support in your area of expertise. This is an excellent strategy for customer retention and is being increasingly used by major brands, but you'll have to adjust how you measure and analyze your performance here. It's all about utility. You don't need to worry about inbound traffic and conversions here to calculate the value of your work. Instead, the value here is all about utility. Was your content able to solve an issue that a customer had? Was your content thorough and descriptive? Usefulness is an ambiguously defined quality here, but you'll need to evaluate it if you want to gauge your effectiveness. The more useful your content is, the better job it will do at keeping your customers happy. Types of user feedback. Since everything's going to depend on user feedback here, you'll need to collect that feedback in a number of different ways. For example, you could include a comment sections, which would help you qualitatively and indirectly gauge how satisfied your users seem to be, or you could use a more pointed system like the question, was this article helpful? At the end of the piece. Star rating systems and surveys are also effective. Google support employs these tactics effectively, on multiple levels the visibility factor. Though usability and user feedback are important factors of success while customers are engaging with your material, your help and troubleshooting content won't do much good if nobody knows they're there. Be sure to promote the existence of this support section on all the typical content syndication and promotion channels you use for the rest of your campaign, and measure your effectiveness accordingly. Email marketing performance. Email marketing can be considered a branch of content marketing since it's usually either relying on content for the bulk of its promoted material, or it's providing the content itself. Accordingly, it's a good idea to track your content performance over email marketing as well. Google Analytics can give you information about how many of your subscribers visited your site, but for more in-depth performance metrics, you'll need to consult your email distribution platform of choice. MailChimp is a fantastic analytics platform to rely on here, especially since it can integrate with Google Analytics directly. Symbiotic relationship with content. First, note that there's a mutual, almost symbiotic relationship between email and content in general. Your email marketing campaign can be used to promote and improve the interactivity of your content campaign, while your content campaign can attract new, more interested subscribers for your email blasts. How you treat email marketing depends on the ultimate goals of your campaign. For example, if you're mostly focused on generating new traffic and sales, email marketing should be focused on driving all traffic and attention to your blog, and you should be measuring how effective it is at this specific task. Engagement factors. You'll also want to look at engagement factors within the email itself. What types of headlines and content are causing people to open emails the most? How often are people interacting with or clicking on links within your email content? You can use heat maps and advanced analytics to determine these metrics, or stick to high-level factors like traffic flow, depending on how important email engagement is for your content campaign. Next level, traffic. You'll also want to take a look at the traffic you get from email within Google Analytics. Segment this traffic out and look at factors like time spent on page and conversion rates. This segment of traffic can be considered to be in the next phase of your buying cycle. Because they're subscribers, they're already at least somewhat familiar with and interested in your brand. How does this change the way they interact with your content? Are they more or less engaged by it? This information can help you develop a more refined strategy, depending on whether you're more interested in the generation of new brand awareness, or the capturing of already interested customers. Conclusion As you've seen, measuring and analyzing the quality and effects of your content marketing campaign isn't exactly straightforward. 
There are thousands of potential variables, and the ones you need to examine for your campaign won't necessarily be the same for anyone else. Measuring effectively depends on having a clear vision, specific goals, and a general understanding of what success means for your campaign. If you need help getting started with a campaign from scratch, be sure to check out my in-depth guide on planning and launching a content marketing campaign. Following the advice I've presented in this guide, you should be able to effectively track countless metrics important to the health and longevity of your content campaign. Calculating your overall ROI and targeting key areas for development and improvement. The keys here, as with most marketing campaigns, are consistency and effort, so keep working hard toward measuring and achieving your goals. If you represent an agency, I suggest you explore partnering with us via our white label SEO program to get in touch. Thank you for joining us on the SEO.co podcast. We appreciate your time. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show and visit SEO.co for more resources based on today's topic, as well as access to more podcast episodes to help you improve your site's long-term SEO success.